Hey, Fit Like YouTube, welcome back to another episode. So, as you can see, World's End is looking pretty bad, covered in cyanobacteria. Picked up a few frags, some simple stuff, hoping that maybe this will take off a bit better than the, the Acroporas. Uh, fish wise, everything's good, however, the Antheas have kind of been dying off, and we're down to one Antheas, and we've got one Pintail Ras. So, I uh, hope at least two of them have survived. Okay, so for the past two weeks, I've been using Microbacter Clean and Fritz 9. Now, this appears to have made a small difference to the cyanobacteria, but nothing major, to tell you the truth. The tank stall looks terrible, the refugium is terrible. So I think what I am going to do is I'm going to use some chemi-clean just to get rid of the cyanobacteria so that then I can put my focus on removing and getting rid of the green hair algae. So first things first, before I use ChemiClean, is to remove as much of the cyanobacteria as possible. So just doing a little water change here and siphoning out all the cyanobacteria that I can see. Just using a very small hose so it doesn't take out too much water at a time. So I've siphoned out as much of the cyanobacteria as I can and this just highlights how bad the green hair algae problem is. So I've used the hose to try and get in amongst all the rock work, get as much of the cyano out of all these crevices as possible and now I'm just going to add some chemi-clean and see if we can get rid of this cyanobacteria once and for all and then like I said I'll be able to focus on treating the green hair algae now to get rid of the green hair algae I'm just going to be keeping my nutrient levels nice and low and hopefully in time the stuff's just going to burn itself out and we'll also top up the cleanup crew since a lot of the cleanup crew in the tank has kind of passed away so we're very limited to the amount of snails we have in here at the moment okay do we so let's get the chemically added and get this looking a bit better Right, I've got a cup of water here. I've calculated the dosage that I need of chemiclean for my size aquarium. So now it's just a matter of adding the scoops to the water and then giving it a right good mix in and then we'll get that added to the display. Add the chemiclean. All mixed up. Over. Put some in there. So while using ChemiClean, please make sure you read the instructions. Step one, it tells you you must increase your oxygen level by adding an air stone. So for God's sake, do it. Running your skimmer is not enough. You really need to have an air stone in here as well. Because the chemiclean reduces the oxygen level in your aquarium. And the last thing you want is to be losing fish because you're using a treatment and you're not following the instructions properly. P 
people who have problems with ChemiClean are usually the people who try to cut corners during this process. So I've got it all set up and we'll see what like the tank is in 48 hours time. So, really bad news, I've managed to scratch the front of my glass, right on the front pane, as you can see. Now the scratch is approximately 100mm long, and it's very noticeable when you're looking at the tank, all you see is this scratch. Here's it from another angle. And yeah, pretty much doesn't matter where you're sitting, this thing stands out like a sore thumb. So what caused the scratch in my aquarium? Well, this little gadget is what caused the scratch. These little clips clip onto your magnet. And unfortunately, whilst I was cleaning the aquarium, somehow one of these caused a 100mm length and scratch on my aquarium as you can see in the footage so this was really bad news the only saving grace is the scratches on the outside of the aquarium which means it's easily treatable and it's quite easy for me to fix however it just means in future I will not be using this this is going to go in the bin and it just shows you how soft your glass is on your water box aquarium which to me is amazing and pretty poor if you ask me that something that's made of plastic can actually scratch your glass so that's another negative for the old water box the glass quality seems to be pretty poor in my opinion however in future I'll just be cleaning it with the felt side to make sure that nothing like this happens again. Okay, so let's get this scratch removed. Ta-da! Scratch is completely gone. Okay, so that's it done. Just removing the excess with a paper towel. Now I'm just going to grab a glass wipe. Give it a 
fine wee polish. Now the key is that when you're using this stuff, just take your time and just work it in layers. Do a little bit, wipe it off, add a bit more of the cerium oxide and just keep repeating it until the scratch is completely gone. So I'm putting my hand in front of the tank to get my camera to focus on my hand which would highlight the scratch. And as you can see, the scratch is completely removed, completely gone. So that's brilliant. Super happy with that. I'm just looking from a different angle. Now the glass inside the aquarium is a little dirty as you can see, but the scratch is completely gone. So thank God for that. I am lucky that the scratch was on the outside, so it was a very simple remove. If it was on the inside, that would have been a whole different headache, but so far I've never scratched the inside of the aquarium. So that's a thumbs up. Picked up some diffuser for the LEDs. Now this will help spread the light a little better and save any hot spots and reduce the disco effect. Not that the disco effect is that bad with the, the G5 Pros, but this will certainly help and it will make it a little bit easier on the eye when I'm sitting watching the TV and not getting blinded by the light. So I also picked up uh, Aquamedic Reef Dozer, just a single in case I want to doze any extra foods. Right, just clipping on the last one here, and they're just magnetic, clip on really easily, and this is a million times better visually for when I'm sitting on the sofa, and with a little bit of luck, hopefully, it's going to help uh, any hot spots in the aquarium as well. Save burning any corals. Picked up another Tunzi light for the refugium. Since I don't think one is enough. So hopefully this will help the macroalgae grow. Okay, so that's the extra Tunzi light added to the refugium. So hopefully that's going to help increase the macroalgae growth in here and in turn help reduce the nutrient level in the display. Okay folks, that's the results are in. The cyanobacteria completely gone, so that's really nice to see. Um, Glad that's gone and I'm really happy I didn't wait 10 weeks for the bacteria to get rid of it. Um, the cyanobacteria, as long as you use it correctly, follow the instructions, it works perfectly every time. Now, there is that thing that, oh, you're going to wipe out all your good bacteria. Well, once you've finished the dosing of the chemiclean, you've done your water change. All I'm going to do now is dose some bacteria to get it back in the system. So that's no problem. And at least now I don't have to look at that unsightly red cyanobacteria anymore. <laughs> However, what's in its place? Green hair algae. So this really sucks. And like I said in previous episodes, I think this is just leaking out of the rock work now from when we had that 0 0.6 phosphate levels. And there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to let it run its course until the phosphate is completely burned out of the system and this can take a fair bit of time especially since this is dead rock so it kind of sucks but it is what it is and I've lost a couple of corals now I wouldn't say this is down to the chemiclean but I'm pretty sure the chemiclean maybe didn't help and the system has struggled growing SPS and it continues to struggle growing SPS. So I did pick up some easier SPS, a couple of Montes, a Stylophora, um, a Turbinaria. Um, and the majority of things are okay, but there is the odd acro like this one, not looking too good. My green plate, it's kind of lost a lot of its color and I fragged that piece there, hoping 
to maybe save it, but I doubt it. But overall, I'm very happy. I'm glad that the cyanobacteria is gone. That's a major boost. And in regards to the corals, I'm not even fussed about the corals. I mean, they're going to be easy enough replaced. My main concern was to ensure that I didn't lose any fish, which I've successfully done. So that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Till the next one. Bye-bye.